Hello everybody. Hi. Good evening everyone. So we are here again tonight. So for the uh, nursing participation and delegation and thank you very much everybody for joining me. It's another uh, Thursday and uh, of course we have prepared questions for you about participation and delegation. Okay. So before anything else, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Mr. Alan Matus and I am a nurse educator. I have been a nurse educator for almost uh, 25 years, I guess. Yeah, and uh, also I'm a nursing faculty. I teach students right now in the nursing program. I help them pass their licensure examination as well. And um, also I'm the uh, founder or the owner of Matus Nursing Review and Matus Nursing Review Online and Clex Academy. And also everyone, if you don't know, I have a book that I published uh, in Amazon. So the title of the book is uh, Simple, Fast, and Easy NCLEX Review. So you can buy this book in Amazon, everyone. And also, it's now available in the Philippines. All you have to do is to email Matus Nursing Review Academy at gmail.com. So this book has a five-star uh, rating, and I'm very happy because a lot of students have been giving feedback about this book, uh, how simple it is to understand and to digest the information as well. So feel free to buy the book, everyone. And also, if you want to have a signed copy of the book, you can go to our website at matusnursingreviewacademy.com. And there's a link there wherein you can have a signed copy of the book also that we can send out here in the United States. Okay, so thank you for that, guys. All right. So next that we have, okay, uh, next in our agenda. But before anything else, I'll give a quick shout out to the first few people who signed in for tonight okay all right so we have the following people who came in for tonight very early so that would be uh let's see uh the first the top five people will be galina nikki tenko and princess tabuzo so i'm giving you a shout out thank you for very much for being here hi kaylis johnson also clara any uh joyce jamila flores who was our winner last week and then also Lisa Zibayan as well, and Gian Torres. So thank you very much for joining us tonight, okay? Now, okay, before anything else also, I would like to share with you our testimonial for the week. Uh, this was sent to me, I think that was, uh, uh, it was this morning. So Bridget uh, sent us this message and a uh, uh, very uh, nice message. Uh, so she sent, uh, also uh, she said, thank you so much, Mr. Matus your delegation and prioritization lectures really helped me answer my questions in the NCLEX. Prayer comes first. I took it on March 6, 2021. Also other resources with content based. I recommended your lectures to one of my friends studying for the NCLEX. You're awesome. God loves you. Uh, please keep up the good work and you are soft spoken and explain things very well. Okay, or everything very well. So big thank you again. So these are the kind of messages that I'm really very happy about when I receive them because I I really like it when I know that uh, my program is helping students pass their NCLEX examination. So thank you very much, Bridget, and good luck on your career. And if you have time also, can you please leave a review in the Facebook, you know, in our Facebook page. Thank you for that. And then also another one for tonight, uh, we're going to have our motivational photo of the week. So this photo was sent to us by our student, Azin. Okay, so Azin uh, sent us this uh, photo studying and of course that's me in the online NCLEX Academy. And uh, for the uh, full videos or the complete set of videos for delegation prioritization, you can actually access them in the online NCLEX Academy that we have. So. She's studying, so, and you can see those flashcards or let's say little post-its. Those are some strategies that you can do when you're studying. So thank you very much, uh, Aizen, for sending us your your uh, uh, your photo when studying using our online NCLEX Academy. Thank you very much for that. All right, just a very quick announcement to everyone also for tonight. Um, this April 24, um, I think that's a month from now. We'll be starting again our next batch of our 10-day live comprehensive NCLEX review webinar. Uh, that will be an interactive online NCLEX review to master your nursing core content. So which means to say that even if you graduated 20 years ago or 10 years ago, and if you want to master your nursing core content, then you can attend this class. That's April 24th to June 19, 2021. That will be from 8 to 4 p.m. Saturday class. And the good thing about this program is that you will have a workbook 
that you'll be using while listening to me during the lecture. And at the same time, uh, you will have a, uh, a six month access to our online NCLEX Academy, which means to say that even after the review, you will still have your own access to our online NCLEX Academy so that you can keep on watching the videos. Okay. All right. Okay, so another one, everyone, uh, of course, for tonight, uh, stay over after this because all of you who are making comments will be entered in a raffle to win the 90 day online access and class review. So stay over because immediately we will announce the winner, everybody. Okay. And then also everybody, if you haven't done it yet, can you please share or um, uh, subscribe if you're watching in our YouTube. So please uh, do that so that others will be also help with the program they'll discover and it will help them also pass the NCLEX. Okay. We have Pastor Nicolas Obiero, just giving him a shout out because of his very nice uh, comment. I'm here tonight, sir. This is a good time for me. Thank you joining you from Delaware, USA. Thank you very much, Pastor Nicolas, for joining us tonight. Okay, so some other comments that we will give a shout out later on maybe. Okay. All right. So thank you for that. So everyone, are you ready for our questions for tonight? Without further ado, we have very nice questions that we have prepared for you on participation delegation. So I would like you to imagine, you know, while sitting down for the NCLEX, you know, um, uh, these are the questions probably, <laughs> okay? So let's have the first question, everyone. Are you ready? And also, can you please put in the comment section from which country or from which state of the United States are you coming from, everyone? And I'll give you a quick shout out, everyone. Okay, so do that, everybody. So let's have our first question, and this is going to be about, um, let's see, I think this is all about delegation or assignment. Okay, all right. So just uh, giving a shout out to some people who stated where they're coming from. Yan Yan, um, actually we have Abidemi Sola from Maryland. Hi, Abidemi. Okay. And also we have Delaware, that would be Pastor Nicholas, of course. Kim Lim from Saudi Arabia. Clara Annie from Houston. Gian Torres is from California. She's our student. And also we have um, CD Gila Salapudin, Azen. Oh yeah, so that's Azen, very good, okay. And then uh, what else? Uh, from India, we have Yoshika Singh, okay. And from Panorama City, we have Yan Yan. So let's read the first question, everybody. Which client will be appropriate to assign to a new graduate nurse in a medical surgical unit that has been converted to care for COVID-19 clients? So A, the 24-year-old client who recently arrived in the unit from the emergency room. B, the 58-year-old client with severe acute respiratory syndrome or SARS who is to be transferred to the ICU. C, the 43-year-old client with type 1 diabetes mellitus who has chrismal breathing and fruity acetone breath. And D, the 37-year-old client with chronic renal failure who is scheduled for discharge into a nursing facility. Okay. So again, I'll read the question again, everybody. Okay. So which client will be appropriate to assign to a new graduate nurse in the medical surgical unit that has been converted to care for COVID-19 clients. A, the 24-year-old client who recently arrived in the, in the unit from the emergency room. B, the 58-year-old client with severe acute respiratory syndrome or SARS who is to be transferred to the ICU. C, the 43-year-old client with type 1 diabetes mellitus who has chrismal breathing and fruity acetone breath. Or D, the 37-year-old client with chronic renal failure who is scheduled for discharge into a nursing facility. Okay, so give me your answer, everybody. Who do you think will be the best to assign to a new graduate nurse? Okay, to a new graduate nurse. Okay, so the key word in this question is going to be a new graduate nurse. Okay, working in the medical surgical unit. And all of these patients have COVID. Remember that all of these patients have COVID, COVID-19 clients, okay? I would like to give a shout out also to Sai Lila from India, okay? And also we have uh, other people will be Vivian Okoye from Texas, okay? And, uh, okay. 
Uh, shout out also to the following students who just joined us, Flor Quarting. Okay, hi Flor, you're my student. Mulu Hadera, Jen Soljel. Lolit Soyosa Johnson, how hi hi Loli, thank you very much for your shout out. Fernando, hi Fernando, how are you doing? Uh, I miss your class, that was awesome. Kim Lim, uh, Noel Burgos, Kim, hi Kim Bernil, our student also, Arlene Manalang, Merlin uh, Flavin, okay, Guadalupe Gomez. Okay, so you're all giving your answer and it seems like I think uh, it seems like this is a new graduate nurse, okay? So the answer is going to be, all right, so the answer for this question, everyone, is going to be, all right, so let's pick the answer, everybody. The answer is going to be, all right, so the answer is going to be letter D. So remember, this is a new graduate nurse and as much as possible you want to give the most stable client for patients for a new graduate nurse so a new graduate nurse the most stable client is the one who's going to be discharged if you compare that with letter a b and c who do you think is the worst uh the worst patients a b and c will be the worst so d renal chronic patient so this is a chronic patient okay number two uh letter d also scheduled for discharge into a nursing facility the fact that this patient is being discharged into a nursing facility is more stable, okay? It's more stable. So that's why the answer is going to be letter D. And this is a new graduate nurse working in that unit. You wanna choose the most stable patient. Now, I would like to make a clear distinction. This is not a floating nurse. This is not a floating nurse. Usually for nurses who are floating, you don't want to assign admission patients or discharge patients because uh, nurses who are floating usually are not familiar with certain protocols, especially admission. We don't want to give that to floating nurses. But this is a new graduate nurse, and for every new graduate nurse, you want to assign a more stable patient that a new graduate can handle. So don't give unstable patients, all right? Now, if you look at letter A, letter A, use the process of elimination. Always remember, everyone, that in the NCLEX, your answer to other questions in the past may not apply to the same question. You really have to look at all the four options which could be correct. Now, letter A, the fact that this person recently arrived in the unit from the emergency room, that is a very unstable patient. Remember that, okay? Now, letter B, the 58-year-old with SARS, S-A-R-S, and the fact, you have to look at the diagnosis and plus the fact, the, the, uh, the clinical condition of your patient which is, uh, or the clinical situation, which is to be transferred to the ICU, meaning that is a very unstable patient, right? Now your letter C, the 43 year old client with type one diabetes mellitus who has cosmol breathing and fruity acetone breath. You have to remember, this is a chronic disease, type one diabetes, but remember type one diabetes, you have to combine that, you know, cosmol breathing and fruity acetone breath are signs of diabetic ketoacidosis. So meaning you don't want to assign letter C because you know, fruity acetone breath and cosmol breathing are character. It didn't say diabetic ketoacidosis, but you have to look in the NCLEX, they will give you the symptoms. So that's why letter C is an unstable patient. Okay, so that's why A, B, and C are all unstable patients, and the most stable so far is going to be your letter D. Okay, okay, so that's it, everyone. So the answer is going to be letter D for this question. All right, now let's go to the next question, everybody. Okay, so Good job for those who got the right answer for the question. So let's have the next one. Which client in the neurology unit should be assigned to a nurse floating from the post anesthesia care unit or PACQ? A, the 45 year old client who has flaccid paralysis due to a recent spinal cord injury. Okay. B, the 36 year old client with transient ischemic attack who is scheduled for carotid endarterectomy. C, the 55-year-old client with multiple sclerosis who needs intermittent catheterization due to a urinary infection. Or D, the 49-year-old client who just returned to the unit after a laminectomy procedure. Okay, so which client in the neuro neurology unit should be assigned to a nurse floating from the post-anesthesia care unit or PACU? A, 
The 45-year-old client was flaccid paralysis due to a recent spinal cord injury. B. The 36-year-old client with transient ischemic attack who is scheduled for carotid endarterectomy. C. The 55-year-old client with multiple sclerosis who needs intermittent catheterization due to a urinary infection. Or D. The 49-year-old client who just returned to the unit after a laminectomy procedure. Okay. So what are the principles? So in so when we were discussing the previous question, there was a new graduate nurse. So you really want to make sure that you assign stable patients. For pay, for floating nurses, the same thing. You have to assign stable patients as well for floating nurses. Okay. So stable, uh, stable patients and. Uh, of course, uh, within the scope of practice and also uh, the skill. You have to look at the skill as well. All right, so everybody put your answer, everyone. Uh, I'd like to make a shout out to Macon Icon Boncolmo, Elizabeth Ekpan, Arlene Manalan Kinko, and then we also have, uh, okay, Guadalupe Gomez, also Freda Villanueva. Okay, Kitty Fury Lientel. Okay, thank you for joining us tonight as well. All right, so pick your answer, everyone. When you're picking answers, okay, or an answer to this question, you have to choose the most stable patient, and at the same time, um, I'll give you the the technique later on or the rationalization why. So try to rationalize or put your answer also. Why is it that you chose letter C in this question? Can you please? Uh, let me know, okay, why letter C is the answer. All right. Okay. All right, so let's have the answer to the question. I think everybody is done. Okay, so the answer to this question, everyone, let's see, okay. Everybody, the answer is going to be letter C. I think most of you got the answers correct. Very good. Okay. Now, letter A. Okay, so let's go to letter C first. Now, letter C is the answer. And uh, uh, let's see. So, we have the response from Yoshika. A patient have recent injury, be scheduled, and floating nurse is unable to handle. And D, one is just returned and needs to be observed. Okay. All right. Okay. So you have all your rational. Okay. All right. So very good. So the answer is letter C because number one, is it a stable patient? Yes, maybe it's a stable patient. And that's really number one, right? The most stable patient. So this is urinary infection. Although we say this is stable, actually letter C is unstable, but then it's the most stable among the most unstable. You know what I mean? So all of them are unstable, but you have to give the most stable. Okay. So, and the three things you need to remember when you are, or two things to remember when, when a nurse is floating. Number one, you have to uh, assign the most stable patient. And another S is it has to be as much as possible a standard skill or the skill of the floating nurse you know meaning that is is the floating nurse going to be able to handle this patient you know so the competence is very important the skill and even the floating nurse can refuse or let's say object or question if she feels that it's unsafe to take care of a patient that's the right of a nurse who is floating to uh to make sure that she uh voices out if she feels that the patient being given to her or him is going to be um, um, a patient that she or he cannot handle safely and that's really very impor important in floating so letter c um, remember in letter c it's intermittent catheterization it it is something that any nurse can do a nurse from a post anesthesia care unit can do and urinary infection is an infection that could be found in other units as well so you know that this is this is is uh, this is a disease that generally most nurses know. So you have to you have to assign a client who is the most stable and at the same time only requires general nursing skills as much as possible. So again, um, what I'm trying to say is general nursing skills and uh, intermittent catheterization is a general nursing skill. Um, 
maybe a blood transfusion maybe or maybe um or maybe uh, let's say giving antibiotics and you really have to look where the person is coming from you know so do, do nurses in the post anesthesia care unit uh, perform catheterization of course okay so that you have to look at the skill of the floating nurse okay and if that is transferable or not okay now when it comes to a floating nurse at least the floating nurse comes from the same you know from the from the hospital itself so but th there's also stress when you're being floated to another unit of course but you know one one more um uh complex scenario is you know what the traveling nurses traveling nurses will be more challenging as well why because they may not be very familiar with the unit especially if they just started uh, um several days ago for example so again you may have to apply the same um principle to traveling nurses until they get used to the unit okay but when it comes to floating nurses this always comes out in the NCLEX so always remember that you have to choose the most stable patient and then you have to uh, choose patients that requires general nursing skill only or standard nursing skill and then always remember that uh, you cannot assign patients to a floating nurse patients who require special special skill specific to the unit you know specific to the unit so for example if it's a telemetry unit you don't want to assign uh, a patient to a floating nurse a patient who requires telemetry skills you know what i mean like uh, um, uh, reading arrhythmias for example or interpreting arrhythmias so you don't want to assign that to a floating nurse because uh, these are very important skills that nurses in the unit should have learned um, and also, um, so if we go back to this question, letter A, someone with a recent spinal cord injury that's an unstable patient and at the same time is a spinal cord injury patient. A spinal cord injury patient can be handled by nurses in the unit itself because they have the knowledge for that, okay? Letter B, someone with TIA scheduled for carotid and arterectomy, that's unstable plus the fact that this patient is scheduled for carotid and arterectomy, so nurses in the unit should be the one handling that because this, this requires unit-specific uh, skill, okay, or special skills. And then letter D also requires special skill or familiarity, you know, 49-year-old laminectomy procedure, you have to be very careful because you have to really turn the patient carefully, right? So that's a special procedure also and requires a special skill. And unit nurses, the nurses in the unit should be able to take care of that patient. So the answer is going to be letter C, everyone. And also remember letter C is a chronic disease, okay? So the answer is going to be letter, uh, letter C, your floating nurse there, okay? So let me see if you have any question, everyone, okay? All right, so let's proceed to the next question, everybody. Let's see if you're ready for this question, guys. Okay, so this will be about delegation or assignment okay all right so let's read the question so congratulations for those who got the right answer i think most of you got the right answer to the previous question good job number three the registered nurse or rn works with the licensed practical nurse or lpn in caring for clients with endocrine disorders which client should be assigned to the lpn a the 34-year-old client who complains of fatigue due to acute adrenal insufficiency. B, the 45-year-old client with Cushing syndrome who requires blood glucose measurements. C, the 54-year-old client who was sweating and tachycardia due to thyroid storm. Or D, the 24-year-old client who developed hypothermia due to myxedema. Okay, so again, the registered nurse or RN works with the licensed practical nurse or LPN in caring for clients with endocrine disorders. Which client should be assigned to the LPN? A, the 34-year-old client, okay, who complains of fatigue due to acute adrenal insufficiency. B, the 45-year-old client with Cushing syndrome who requires blood glucose measurements. C, the 54-year-old client who was sweating and tachycardia due to thyroid storm, or D, the 24-year-old client who developed hypothermia due to mixed edema. So what's the answer, everybody? A, B, C, or D? Okay, so most of you answered. Let's see. 
Okay, and let's give a shout out again to some people who just came in. Claire Barker, hi. Welcome tonight, Claire. Glyn Sakido Sousa is watching. Emma Domingo Guerrero also. Okay, Maria Nilda Estabilio Tabu is also watching. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. So Uche Audi uh, Equinife is also watching. Thank you. All right. So the answer to this question, everyone, is going to be all right. Most of you got the right answer, I guess. Okay. So let's have the answer to this question. That would be your letter B. Very good, everyone. So B is the answer. Okay. Now. Why B is the answer? Because that's only Cushing syndrome and it's only requiring blood glucose measurement. There is no indicator of uh, complication there. Okay? So, although we know that in Cushing syndrome, you have hyperglycemia. Okay? All right. Now, let's try to dissect the question. So, letter A, it says acute adrenal insufficiency. You all know that acute, by the word acute, it means severe or sudden. And adrenal insufficiency, I've discussed that in this Facebook Live. Uh, that is your adrenal crisis, wherein there is a sudden lack of steroids and that leads to hypotension, weakness, fatigue, uh, vascular collapse. So letter A is a very unstable patient, okay? Now your letter C, you have uh, sweating and tachycardia. We all know that thyroid storm is also a medical emergency actually, <laughs> okay? So you have sweating and tachycardia, fever, palpitations, you know, uh, that would be a severe form of hyperthyroidism. So we don't want to give that to letter to your LPN. Now your letter D, the 24 year old with hypothermia with myxedema. Okay, it's not an airway problem, but myxedema itself is a severe form of hypothyroidism, which is an unstable patient. So you should know. Okay, you should know. Okay, now. Well, you see, um, there will be blood glucose measurements is a skill for UAP, yes. But then the question here is there is no UAP in this situation, everyone. There is no UAP, okay? So that's why you can give this to, uh, to an LPN. And of course, LPNs can measure blood glucose, definitely. That's the risk within the scope of practice, okay? Um, uh, UAP can measure blood glucose as well. But again, remember, it depends on different states. Okay, in the United States, you know, it depends on the scope of practice. It's very important for all UAPs that uh, before you delegate, you have to check the scope of practice in the in the state. Okay, so the answer is going to be letter B. Okay, all right. So that's going to be because uh, when you assign a patient uh, to an LPN, it has to be a stable patient again, and at the same time, it has to be within their scope of practice. Okay. All right, you don't want to assign those other patients. So again, in the NCLEX, you really have to look at all the situations, A, C, or D, okay? And the number one category that you want to make sure is that, is it within the scope of practice or is it uh, um, part of the, uh, is it a stable patient, okay? All right, so let's go to the next, uh, the last number, everyone. That would be number four, okay? All right. So number four, which of the following tasks can be delegated by the registered nurse or RN to the unlicensed assisted personnel or UAP in the orthopedic unit? Select all that apply. A, elevate the right leg after cast application. B, turn the client who is recovering for a spinal fusion surgery. C, place a bed cradle for a client with gouty arthritis. D, apply hand splints on a client with rheumatoid arthritis, or E, observe the color of the toes of a client placed on skeletal traction. Okay, again, which of the following tasks can be delegated by the registered nurse to the unlicensed assess assistive personnel in the orthopedic unit? Select all that apply. A, elevate the right leg after cast application. B, Turn the client who is recovering from spinal fusion surgery. C, place a bed cradle for a client with gouty arthritis. D, apply hand splints on a client with rheumatoid arthritis. Or E, observe the color of the toes of a client placed on skeletal traction. So read the question carefully, everyone. 
Okay, make sure that, okay, you remember your three letter S's. Can someone tell me again, what are the three letter S's? for delegating to UAPs, okay? All right. So what are the three letter S's everyone? Okay, what are the three letter S's? Scope, very good. The skills, okay. Uh, what else do you have? Uh, you also have the stable patient also. Okay. All right. So those are the three letter S's, everyone. So very good. You remember. Okay. We have discussed that many times in this uh, session here. Okay. So use those three principles when you're picking your answers, everyone. Okay. So make sure, okay, that you know the three letter S's, you apply that, okay? All right. Okay, so let's have the answer to this question, everyone. Okay. Okay, so let's see. Okay, most of you answered. Okay, all right. So the answer to this question, everyone, is going to be, all right, so let's see what's the answer to the question. Okay, all right, so what's the answer? For some of you, you answered, uh, what's this? Some of you answered uh, B and D, A, C, D, okay. A, C also, C and D. All right, so let's find out what's the final answer. The final answer, everyone, is going to be A, C, and D. Okay, very good. All right, so A, C, D, so most of you answer that for UAP. Elevating the right leg after cast application, that's okay. All right, that's only a cast application. You just have to elevate, that's fine. Okay, now letter C, place a bed cradle for a client with gouty arthritis, that's correct. Okay, very good. So letter D, uh, apply hand splints on a client with rheumatoid arthritis also. So very good, Asta. Asta got it right. Okay. Also Nikolai, very good. So you got the right answer also. Congratulations. All right. We also have Mulu Hadera, got it right as well. Okay. Then you also have, uh, yes. So those are the answers, everyone. Now, um, let's try to dissect the question. Why is that the answer? Let it be turning the client who is recovering, meaning that this is a recent surgery. And remember, spinal fusion surgery, <laughs> spinal fusion surgery is such a delicate procedure, right? So major surgical operation. And you have to be very careful when you're turning the patient after surgery to make sure that you don't twist the spine. So spine alignment is very important, okay? Prevent injury. So recovering, especially if it says recent spinal fusion surgery, okay? So that will be letter B, is not included. Your letter E, observe the color of the toes, then definitely E is not included because it's an assessment, okay? But the question is, can the UAP report any changes in the color of the toes? Can people answer that? Can you say yes, yes or no? Can a UAP report changes in the color of the toes yes or no of course yes okay report any change in condition changes in the color of the toes or any paresthesia or any swelling for example that has to be reported okay but observing the color you know like making sure that uh, there's enough circulation that has to be done by the registered nurse so bne would be the registered nurse always remember when you delegate to the uap is this patient stable or unstable, okay? So is the UAP uh, safe enough to handle this patient? So let it be no. Letter A is okay, it's only elevating the cast, okay? So that'll be A, C, and D, everyone. 
So that's it, everybody, for tonight. Thank you very much for answering yes. Okay. And as usual, before we continue, I would like to plug in our program, which is the Matus Nursing Review Online NCLEX Academy. So we have the workbook, we have the online academy, we have hundreds of NCLEX quizzes after each lesson. And the lessons are organized in such a way from fundamentals to medical surgical nursing to mental health nursing with quizzes after each lecture. And you can always leave a comment as well and I respond to your comments or to your questions. And also, um, it is a workbook, which is an option so that when you watch the videos, you can answer or write on the workbook as well. Okay. So thank you very much for that. So if you have more questions, just visit uh, www.matusnursingreview.com or you can directly visit www.matusnursingreviewacademy.com. We will also post links in the comment section so you know uh, our products. Okay. All right. Okay. So another one. Okay. Now we have a very nice uh, merchandise that we just released this week. It's our tumbler you know water tumbler water bottle so it says i can do it and nothing else will stop me so you can visit also matusnursingreview.com or matusnursingreviewacademy.com to get this special tumbler everyone okay so you can use that while you're studying everybody okay all right okay and then let's have a shout out so we have joy said four over four okay very good okay then we also have Alfred, okay, very good as well. Then also my workbook just arrived today. Well, I hope that you will enjoy the workbook, okay? It's 400 pages, okay? So you'll be busy writing, okay? All right. So, and our winner last week, can you please congratulate Joyce Jamila Flores? So she won last week uh, our uh, online NCLEX Academy raffle. So congratulations, Joyce. So please congratulate her. All right. So again, everybody, thank you very much. And for leaving some nice comments there, I will be reading them. They're really very inspiring. And again, always remember that NCLEX is just around the corner. All you have to do is to have that positive determination and the will to succeed and have the right resources in front of you, which is very important for me. I want my students to, uh, to feel that the resources I provide them is helping them. And that's the most important thing for you to find out, you know, if it fits your learning style, which is the most important thing. OK. And of course, the most important thing is that um, nursing, studying nursing, there's just really a lot of information. So how do we simplify that? How do how do we make that uh, stress free in such a way that we're not sacrificing the quality of learning? Because at the end of the day, it's very important for you to know safe nursing practice. OK, so again thank you very much everybody i'll see you next week okay and uh we have some sale coming up maybe so you will know that next week everyone and please like our page and our youtube channel again also thank you very much everyone and have a good night <music>